Are you guys ready for an original six draft challenge? I think I am. I will not have the expanded player pool on, which means we can only draft from these six teams as well. So we're kind of just like reshuffling. And there will be some free agents, which I guess Patrick Kane technically last played for the Rangers anyway. At least when I'm recording this, I should specify. He might sign. Maybe. Actually, you know what? Before we get started, I'm going to see if there's any kind of roster update. There actually was a new roster, so thankfully I checked that out. I'm not really sure if it's going to affect this draft, but maybe. Could be some overall changes, some abilities taken away or given. Which I'm also still not really sure if abilities affect simulation. For the random team here, I'm just going to have to do it the old school way. So, hey, how's it going? Boom! Montreal. Le Canadien de Montreal. Yeah, let me just realign these divisions real quick. What? No owner mode. Yes to fantasy draft. We do not want the expanded player pool. We do not want Jabroni touching our lines. Fog of War is also a no thank you. I'll just leave player morale off this time. But yeah, we can allow CPUs to trade. My odds of choosing which draft position we're going to have are drastically higher for this one. And I'm going to say we get... For some reason, I feel like we're going to get six. Just the last pick. No, we get the first. And with said pick, I will be taking 95 overall sniper, David Pasternak. Welcome to the Canadians. Wow, Bedard went third. I was going to take him as my second pick, but obviously that is not an option. Okay, fair enough. We do have back-to-back -back picks here, and I don't know why, but I feel like Suzuki and Pasta would be gross together. So I'm going to take Suzuki... And to be honest with you, I don't think any have gone yet, and I want Igor. He's gone. I take it back. But Allmark is still good, 90 overall. So, yeah, that works. This is a really tough decision. I'm trying to take a D-man here, and I'm debating between Jones and Miller. I mean, I guess I get back-to-back -back picks for the rest of the draft now, no? So, and one shoots right and one shoots left. So, yep, I'm gonna go ahead, take Jones and Miller, and... That will be our first defensive pair. I'm liking the way this team is coming together. We could put two playmakers at the disposal of David Pasternak. And that way, Boston Bruins legend, former teammate of Pasta, is reunited with him on line number one. Let's achieve that goal. And Burt can be the start to our second line. Fabry is slash center. He only has 65 face-offs, but I'm going to take him anyway. And for my next selection... I will be taking Timothy Lilligren. I have to take the new David Krejci, aka Blake Wheeler. So far, that comment is holding true. Let's see if it continues in this one. 84 face-offs for Copper. Yup. Welcome aboard. I haven't even looked at our cap. What do we have? We've got 22 mil left, and we have currently selected 11 players. So, we've definitely been taking some big contracts, but I still think we're sitting pretty nicely. The man has 92 face-offs, so I'm gonna go with Jonathan Taves. And next up, I will be taking Radish. Right winger, he's only 25. Power forward, love to see it. Ooh, Matthew Nyes, good pick by the Rangers. The Wayne Schwain is absolutely joining my team, so I'm glad that I sorted by potential. And I don't think we have to worry about another team scooping him up, so we can probably save him for last. Although I'm not a fan of that $4 million contract, I'm gonna go with Perry. Or am I? Yeah, I am. I am going to do it. Timothy Lilligren is right-handed, correct? He is. So we need a left-handed defender to play alongside him. Sorry, Savard, but you don't make the cut. Gustafson makes the cut, but I feel like... I don't know. Isn't Lilligren an offensive defenseman? I don't really want to... No, he's two-way. Okay. Congratulations, Mr. Lion. You have officially landed yourself a backup role. Looks like we are going to be okay cap-wise. So I'm going to go with Barclay Goudreau, a left-winger. And we need one more center, and then our final defensive pair, and we are off and running. No clue why nobody is taking Charlie Coyle, but I will. We are about to run this league into the ground. It is going to be scary. Our final pick of the draft is going to be Jakob Zaboral, who went with Seneshin and DeBrusque when the Boston Bruins had three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back picks. And with that, our draft is completed. So let's sim the rest of it and have a look at what we did. I love that. Look at pick 192. This AI knows what it's doing. Unless there's another C price that I don't know about. But I feel like there isn't. Yeah, let's go throw the lines together. And we should have some good chemistry. The preseason has been simulated. It is time to find out what we're dealing with here. 
for the Montreal Canadiens. That is awesome. No, don't even think about it. I'm actually going to move Radish up and Corey Perry down one because it's still a plus one on this last line and I'd rather have Radish on the third line but we are roll four lines anyway should definitely see some points from Hall, Suzuki and Pasta I feel like that line's gonna go off our second line is more of a defensive line but they could get some offense generated and then we've got Fabry playing with Taves and Radish I really like that as a third line. In fact, even our fourth line is really good, so I'm just down with the offense as a whole. How is our defense looking? Amazing. Plus three on the first pair. Lilligren and Gustafsson get a zero, but that's all right. It's better than being in the negatives, and I'm not going to make that move. No, we'll just have the plus one on the last pair. We are roll all pairings, and what about our goaltending situation? We're winning the cup. 1000%. Okay, I'm actually not that confident in that, but I feel like we have a really good shot here. Our team is deep. And having 99 face off Jonathan Taves on your team certainly helps. So I will say that we get 50 wins. No, 52. We're going to get 52 wins. Pasta is going to have the most points with 112. That is some bold predicting right there, but. We're gonna find out. This simulation speed is insane. Wow, is this faster. This feels like NHL 06 all over again. Our record is looking good. We are second in the league at the moment. Chicago is currently leading, so they got quite the squad going on over there. We take them down there. Like, the pop-ups are just coming so fast. Because the calendar is flying. Keep the current trading block, but let's go ahead and enter just to see who's available. William Nylander, Will Nye the hockey guy from the New York Rangers. Wow, all right. And then we got Sammy, Perron. There's some good players here. But alas, I will not be making any moves. Get me out of here. Our team's doing just fine, thank you. Ooh, a fourth and Matheson for a second. What a blockbuster. My prediction was horrifically wrong. We finished with 41 wins and had 93 points. What the heck did the New York Rangers have? We can go through every team quick enough because there is only six of them. So here's Boston's offense. They got Marnsey playing with Zabinijad and Kreider. Really good first line. Domi is a great third line center. Defensively, they got Riley and Truba. Petrie, who I was going to draft and just, I don't know, never got around to it. They got Wi-Fi. Great pickup. And they ended up drafting Igor. Next, we have Chicago. They got Wall and Blomqvist. Interesting. Picked up Lafreniere with Larkin and Caulfield on the first line. Heedle playing with Raymond and Reichel. Newhook, yeah, so... Wait. No. Did they make the playoffs? I'm not sure. But anyway, we've got Panarin playing with Doc, who had that injury. So hopefully everything works out there. I heard it's pretty bad, so... Yep, thinking of you, Docky. Marchi on the second line is absolutely brutal. They did grab Leo Carlson to play with Gallagher and DeBrusque. So that's a nice third line you got there. Holy crap, that mustache. Playing with McAvoy, <laughs> Carlo, and Schneider. And their goaltending situation is as follows. The Rangers have Johnny T with Matthews and Nylander. So they just drafted Leafs, basically. They also got Noah Gregor, who is another Leaf. Perron and Savoie are not, however. Matthew Nyes sure is. So is Robertson. Slavkovsky on the third line. Defensively, Lindholm and Brody. Yeah, their defensive core isn't really that good. And in net, they have Swayman. So they're an offensive powerhouse. Last but not least, the Toronto Maple Leafs, who have 88 overall. Connor Bedard playing with ADB and Hattrick Kane. Wow. Defensively, they grabbed Cider, and they also have Klingberg and McCabe, so they brought them back. Matheson was the trade deadline pickup, I believe, in net. Samsonov. Okay. Pasta led the squad. He did not have the 112, I think I said, but he got 99. Very close to 100. Suzuki had 93. Wheeler was 75, and Burt 73. Taylor Hall down here was 65. Oh my days. Like, should I just move him up to the first line? Maybe I could even move Burt up. Because he has 73 points. I'll think about it. Not the greatest stats from our goalies. Both above a 3 GAA and dangerously close to the 900 save percentage. Jones had 58 points. Miller with 23. Gustafson with 43. I guess he is an offensive defenseman. Lilligren 
just doesn't have an excuse. That is unacceptable. Matthews gets the Rocket Richard, the Art Ross. He's going to clean up at the awards. An absolute janitor. Nylander had 77 hamburger helpers and 109 points. And Tavares was the only other player to break 100. Passed his right there at number four. And then Zabinijad, Panarin, and Suzuki all had 93. Oh no! I just realized the reason we didn't win the President's Trophy is because we didn't get the Wayne Train. I forgot! Swayman had the most wins with 38, and yeah, pretty good save percentage. Allmark was third, but again, wow, never mind. His save percentage was better than Samsonov's. Fox is the defensive leader, nearly point a game, a nice amount of assists. McAvoy, 74, and then yeah, there's like big jumps. It goes down to 67 and then 58. It's playoff time! We have... The Boston Bruins in round number one. Let's sim past the first four games here. I think there's only two rounds. Wow. This is a close one. Best of three. Ooh. Do they push a seven? They do. Come on, Canagens. Here we go. Let's take down the Bruins. That is not a good start. Power play goal for Maximus Domi. And we are already trailing in this game seven. Not for long, though, because Taylor Hall buries one on Igor. It's a 1-1 hockey game. Will that be the result heading into the second? Yes, it is. All right, shots are pretty even. We are in one. Let's get the second underway here. For some reason, goals love happening in the first couple minutes, but not this time. Grizzlick will score, and Marner follows him up to give the Bruins a cushion. They now have a two-goal lead. Also a long power play. Another power play. What's going on, Montreal? Can we get our act together here? Please and thank you. Okay. Two seconds left. I was so mad I couldn't even drink water properly. I just spilled it on myself. But anyway, here we go. Let's carry forward into what is almost guaranteed to be an L. Yeah, it's done. I'm just simming the whole period. All right. Well, I would say we put up a good fight, but not really. Will it be the Rangers or will it? Wow, that was convincing. Fabry led our team. He had eight points in seven games. Wheeler, Radish, and Taves all had five. Pasta had three and was a dash four. Suzuki had three and was a dash four. What happened? Again, not great stats from Allmark. They're not terrible, so you can't solely blame him. In fact, I'm more so blaming our star players, but yeah. It is what it is. Jones had four points. Miller, three. Gustafson, Timmins, two. Just more trophies for this guy to win. 22 points in 11 games. Gonna win the Conn Smythe also. Swam in with a 930 save percentage. So not only were they getting it done offensively, but they were shutting it down at the defensive aspect of the game. Wow. All right. So let's go look at the trophies, even though I think pretty much we know what we're in for. They won the Stanley Cup and the President's Trophy. Individual... Let's just see how many he can get. So Riley with the Norris. Nylander gets the Lady Bing. Bedard with the Calder. That checks out. Conn Smythe the Matthews. Vesna and the Jennings go to Shesterkin. Gooley gets the Masterton. Lindsay with the Jet. <laughs> I don't know why that sounded wrong. For some reason. Uh, anyway. Ah, I've clocked it. Because you know, there's the Ted Lindsay Award. Lindsay won the Jack Adams. So it really threw me off. Anyway. Zabanejad takes the Selkie, and then Matthews with the Lindsay and the Richard. So it actually wasn't as much of a Matthews cleanup as I thought it was going to be. But he still won a lot. Here is your extremely abbreviated playoff tree. The Rangers kind of made light work of the league. They did what I thought we were going to do. So props to you. And yeah, that does it for this one. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. If you do have an NHL game, I think... Did they introduce the custom leagues last year? So if you have NHL 23, you can still do this. And I recommend it. It's fun. So thank you guys for watching. If you could drop a like, that'd be appreciated. I will see you soon.